What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series, we are going to be going over quarter circle inputs. So if I go into my practice mode and load up a level, skip through all this, we are in practice here. You can see the input stacks on the left and right side. Up to this point in the series, we had the ability to press down, down right, and right, and get those inputs to display in the input stack while in the practice mode. So you can see down, down right, and right. But we could never actually capture that as quarter circle inputs. What would happen is we would say down, right, and that would be it. We would say down and right if we did it that way. Because our input buffer was checking to see what inputs we pressed. We can do a little bit of logic here to actually track the down, down right, and right inputs when releasing the down key, allowing us to perform a true quarter circle input. I have assigned the tornado up from ground attack to be my quarter circle attack. So if I do this right, I actually just performed a quarter circle move. Now this is on keyboard, but it will work on controller as well. I will demonstrate that later. And I can technically go back as well. Quarter circle backward works. You may not ever need that, but for tracking your inputs correctly, I would recommend that we add both quarter circle methods in here. It's very easy to do. So this is one I'm really excited about because I love quarter circle moves in fighting games. I think they're very iconic and I'm glad we can finally perform them. Now to those of you who want to get caught up in the series and figure out how we did all of the stuff we've done in this tutorial series, we are on episode 195. So we are quite far along, but we still have a long way to go. You can learn how to do the launches, the attacks, the throws. If you want to, just click this icon in the top right corner right here, and you can check out the playlist. This playlist will show you all the episodes in the Fighting Game Tutorial series, as well as some other ones that I think are beneficial. And you can get caught up and have what we have on the screen. Now, this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We are going to be working pretty much exclusively in the code today. So to do this, let's go to fighter template character.cpp and fighter template character.h, our base character files. Let's go to the base character.h and in here I want to scroll down to my variables previously in the series we had added a variable a boolean called is pressing backward and this boolean was used to determine if we were pressing backward that way even if we weren't moving backward we could do things like perform an auto block so for example if we were crouching but we were pressing backward then we could still perform a crouch block so we don't have to be moving backward to be pressing backward they are different and that's why i track them differently but i've added a new variable for today's episode called is pressing forward and this is literally just the opposite is the player pressing or holding the forward movement input this is important because we're going to use both is pressing backward and is pressing forward in our logic today to actually get the true quarter circle input. So bool is pressing forward. You'll notice like is pressing backward. It is not you property. We don't have to track it in the blueprint for any reason. If you want to, you could go ahead and do that, but I don't need to for today's episode. So after you've made that variable, we can go into the fighter template character.cpp and we can scroll down to the constructor where we set all of our defaults. And I'm going to go to where I set is pressing backward. That was being set to false, and I'm also gonna set is pressing forward to false. When the character spawns, they most likely aren't pressing any direction, and even if they are, it will update immediately upon receiving that input, so we can default it to false safely. After doing this, the next thing we wanna do is determine where we wanna set is pressing forward to true and false during the gameplay. And the best place for this is our move right function. So if we scroll down to move right, Here's my move right function. I will go over the logic a little bit, but it has a lot from a lot of different episodes. So the most important thing is that we basically match anywhere that we have is pressing backward, we match it with an is pressing forward. This first if statement here is just checking to see if the character is crouching or crouch blocking. And if they're not, go into here and do this logic. But if I follow it down, this else statement here is just saying that the character is crouching or crouch blocking. We want to skip this as well. And once we come to the end of this else, we go and check a few other things, such as if the character can move and if their combo state is knocked down. In this specific logic, we were checking to see if we could perform a roll or not. And the reason we care about this is because you could see that is pressing backward is being set in this one if statement. 
we were setting backward roll recovery and forward roll recovery. To this point, we haven't needed is pressing forward. So we had set is pressing backward in the if statement, and then in the else statement, it was just the combo state being set. As I said earlier, we want to match every is pressing backward with an is pressing forward. So since is pressing backward was being set in the if statement, in the else statement, we want to set is pressing forward. And we're going to set that to true. And this is because the if statement is if not facing right, which would be facing left. The else is the opposite of this. So if is facing right, which means the else handles if we are facing right. If we're facing right and we're pressing a value that is to the right, which is any value greater than zero. This means we are facing to the right and pressing to the right, which means we are in fact pressing forward. Now the else statement here is the same. It's if we are pressing the other direction. So if we're pressing left, and in this case, if we were facing right and pressing left is pressing backward was being set to true. Again, the else statement was just setting the combo state. Now we wanna go ahead and add is pressing forward to be true in here as well. So for every is pressing backward, there should be an is pressing forward in the opposite condition. The else statement here means that we were pressing no direction. So is pressing backward was false and is pressing forward is going to be false as well. You can go ahead and add that in. If the player is not pressing either direction, left or right, then we're not going to set either of these booleans to be true. Underneath of that logic, I have my logic for the main movement. This is where we check certain character states and jumping states to see if we are pressing the correct inputs to be able to move forward or backward. In here, we have our check for our value. Basically, are we pressing to the right? And if we are, we check the direction. And if we're not facing right, that means that we are facing left and pressing to the right, which is a backward input. So we check to see if we're not dashing or running backward. And if we're not, then we can just set it to the standard moving backward. At that point, we were setting is pressing backward to be true. If this if statement failed, meaning that we were in fact facing right, we would automatically just check this and set moving forward. But if we do that, it does kind of ruin our plans with is pressing forward here, because whether or not we are facing right, we will end up hitting this logic and setting is pressing forward to true. So what we should really do is take this logic that we already had, where we were checking the dashing forward and running forward states to set the character state to moving forward and put that inside of another else statement. Now, once we do this, we no longer need the else if on this if statement, it can just become an if statement, like the logic above it that we just went over. So now my logic in here looks like this. If not is facing right, and then we check and see if we are moving backward, dashing backward, or running backward. But regardless, at this point, we know that we are pressing backward. So we set is pressing backward to be true. Then I've added an else statement and changed the else if that was already here to a regular if statement, checking for dashing forward and running forward, then setting the character state to be moving forward. At this point, I want to set is pressing forward to be true after that. And so now my first if statement inside of my standard movement logic here is going to be checking for is pressing backward and is pressing forward. And really, we just want to repeat this process. This is because this if statement was checking to see if we were pressing to the right. So we handled all of the behavior if we were pressing to the right in a neutral state, such as idle. But what if we're pressing to the left? That is the else if statement. And so we need to adjust this to make sure it works as expected. So we have if is facing right, and this is our backward input. In here, we are setting is pressing backward to be true. But remember, it doesn't exactly work the same. We can set is pressing forward here, but then it will be set to true for both scenarios. So what we should really do is write an else statement, put the else if that we already had inside of that else statement, change the else if to a regular if statement, and then I'll clean it up here. And I want to put is pressing forward true after that. Now the else statement is going to be like you saw above. Now we have pressing right, pressing left, both set up correctly. The other condition is this other else here. This else condition is if the right input is not being pressed and the left input is not being pressed. 
Basically, the player is not trying to move the character. And at this point, we were setting is pressing backward to be false. So we want to go ahead and do that again, but for is pressing forward, we want to set it to false. And that is all of our default neutral logic for movement. This else if here is for wall jumping. It's not relevant right now to check if we're pressing forward backward. It's not important. We don't ever have any conditions that would matter for that. Then we have another else if condition in move right and this is checking for if the character is crouching or the character is crouch blocking now if they are we don't have to deal with the movement logic that we were doing last time but we still want to check if the player is pressing backward or pressing forward this is important so in here we were doing the same steps it looks confusing but really it's the same steps just for different states so this is if the character is crouching if the character is crouching and they are pressing to the right we were checking to see if they were not facing right, meaning they were facing left. So if they're facing left and they're pressing to the right, is pressing backward was true. We should add an else statement in here now, this didn't previously exist, where we set is pressing forward to be true. This else if is checking if the player is pressing the left input. If they're pressing the left input and they're facing right, then they are pressing backward but we can add an else in here to set is pressing forward true. Because remember, if we are pressing a left input and we are not facing right, that means we're facing left. That means we'll go into the else statement. And if we're pressing left and facing left, we are in fact pressing forward. The else statement is if there is no value provided, meaning the player isn't pressing a left or right input. So even though they're crouching, doesn't matter. We wanna say is pressing backward is false and is pressing forward is false. That was a mouthful, but now that we've talked about it, we can go over it again in Move Right Controller, and I'll go over it live with you so you can really see what's going on. Now, it's not too bad once you get the hang of it. So in my Move Right Controller function, if I wanted to mimic the behavior that we just had, I want to basically just find my first is pressing backward. This is the easiest way to do it, in my opinion. So I can scroll through this function, and I see that we are checking for our rolling here. And I say, is pressing backward is true in this if statement, but this else statement doesn't have anything. Well, what should we do? We should come in here and say, is pressing forward equals true. We're performing the forward roll recovery, so we can assume that at this point the player has pressed the forward input, and we want to set that to be true. In the else if statement, this is checking for the left input, and we can see is pressing backward is being set to true here. So in this else statement, we want to set is pressing forward to be true. We have this else statement here where we are resetting is pressing backward because there is no input given by the player. At this point, we want to say is pressing forward is also false. If there's no input, is pressing backward and is pressing forward should be false. Now here we have our neutral state. So again, like idle, and we're just trying to go to walking and just regular moving. So in here, we're checking to see if the player is pressing a value greater than zero, meaning they're pressing to the right. And if they're not facing to the right, but they're pressing right, they are in fact pressing backward. Now my behavior in move right controller was actually set up a little bit differently. At some point in the series, it just got flipped around. This means I don't have to add the else statement and change the else if to just a regular if that's already been done for me. And so we were setting is pressing backward to be true in the if statement in the else I want to set is pressing forward to be true. Then there is the else if this means the player is pressing to the left and we can see in the if statement is pressing backward is true. That means in the else statement is pressing forward should be true. The else condition here means there is no input when they're in their neutral state, so we're not moving them left or right, and the player is not trying to move them left or right, so is pressing backward is false, and that means is pressing forward should also be false. We have wall jump behavior, which I'm not going to care about the is pressing backward and forward for. And then we go to our crouching behavior. So this is what it looks like, and we can see that we're checking to see if the player is pressing to the right and they are not facing right. If they are pressing to the right and facing to the left, they are pressing backward. So is pressing backward was true. We want to add an else in here. That means they are facing to the right and they are pressing to the right. So we can go ahead and set is pressing forward to be true. 
else if the value is less than negative 0.2, meaning the player is pressing to the left. If they're pressing to the left, but they are facing right, is pressing backward will be true. That means if we add this else statement, if they're facing to the left and pressing to the left, is pressing forward will be true. Lastly, if no input was given, is pressing backward is false, and is pressing forward should also be false. And that's move right and move right controller supporting our is pressing backward and is pressing forward functions. This is perfect for knowing if we're pressing left or right. And really what it's useful for is if we are pressing diagonal, say down right, and we release down, we can say the player is still pressing to the right and automatically add a right input in there. This is good for keyboard where we have multiple keys being pressed, but it's also good for controllers where we have a physical device in our hands and we are moving the joystick from the down to the down right to the right. At some point in there, down is no longer really being pressed, right? The stick is only being pressed to the right. And so we need to know when down has been released. That way we can add that extra right input. A good place to check for this is in the stop crouch function because stop crouch is bound in our player controller right here when we release the crouch input. So when the player releases the crouch input, which is just down, we call stop crouching. Let's go back to our character and let's go to our stop crouch function. Now for me, the stop crouch function is actually up here. I'm going to scroll up. And here we are. Of course, you can search for it if you want. There are a lot of lines of code in this file, and so that would be easier to find it. But here's my stop crouching function. Now, up to this point, we had all this behavior in the series. This behavior was adding the release of the down input to the input buffer, actually disabling the crouch, and setting the character state properly. But I've added this behavior at the very top of it. And we are checking to see if we are pressing forward or if we are pressing backward. And if we are pressing forward or backward, but down just got released, we want to be able to add that extra right or left input in there. This is particularly useful for keyboard because if we are pressing, let's say S and D or my down and right keys respectively. If I press down, I press the S key, then I press S and D for down right, and then I release S for just right. I haven't technically pressed the D key, the right input, a second time, I just release the S key. When I release the S key, if I'm pressing to the right or to the left, I want to say I have pressed the right key. As far as the game is concerned, that means we have done a quarter circle input and that's all we need. With a controller, you just have the joystick values, which is still equally important that we know what we're pressing. Basically, at the start of stop crouching, I've added two if statements. I've added an if is pressing forward and an if is pressing backward. I didn't make them an if else if because technically you can press both inputs on a keyboard at the same time. The game will prioritize one over the other, but you could be pressing both. And if you are, it could actually break the chain and that could be good. We don't want the user just pressing like 26 keys on their keyboard and then performing commands because they just press them all at the same time randomly. So I made them separate if statements to check for both and add them both to the input buffer if needed. I check for it is pressing forward. And at this point, I want to add the input icon to the screen. This is for practice. This is for the input stack, but we still want to do this. That way we can see that we are performing quarter circles properly. It requires an integer of the type that we're adding and my enum input type has all of these values stored in it. So if I go to this enum, these are all my types of attacks that are bound to buttons. And they're set up in the same order in the blueprint as they are here. So we just convert or we cast the enum value to an integer and pass that in to the add input icon to screen. We do it all over the place. You can see it other points in this code. So you're probably familiar with this, but this will get the input icon onto the screen. More importantly, though, for logic, we need to call perform input logic, which is how we register inputs and what they should actually do. To do this, we need the type of input as well as the status of the input. So press release hold. 
We are kind of faking this here since we are manually adding the input if they meet these conditions. So we have to manually pass in the E forward. So basically whatever you had the icon for, pass that in as your type. And for your status, put a press. And just a quick reminder, E input status, if we go to the definition on that, it's just press release hold. And the same as for is pressing backward, we're just using the backward type instead of the forward type. So we check to see if we're pressing backward. And if we are at this point, we want to add that icon to the screen. And then we want to perform input logic using E backward and E press. At this point, we're good to start the editor back up and test a few things out. We'll have to set up our command, but I'll meet back up with you when the editor is open. The editor is back open, so now we can go to where we make our commands, and that is in my mutant command data. In here, I had a rising tornado move. This is the one I'm using. Of course, use whatever commands you want. And so previously, this move was backward, forward, heavy. I'm going to update this move to now be crouch, forward crouch, forward, and the input type that I want. So I changed it from three inputs to four. I added a new input type and I set up my stuff like this. So we have crouch as my first type and it is a press. No charge frames required and it's not currently being held. Forward crouch as my next one. It is a press and same deal for the charge frames and is currently held. Third one, forward, press, zero and false. Fourth input, heavy attack, press, zero, and false. Max frames between inputs is left as a default of 30, but of course you can change that as well. And everything else on here is up to you if you want to set it. None of it is actually required for this demonstration. And now when you come into your game, let's go to practice again so you can see those input stacks. When I come into the game, if I do this right, I can press down, forward, release down, and I can get down, down forward, forward. And that's exactly what we want. On a keyboard, that is the easiest way to be able to do a quarter circle. The same way works for back as well. Now I can actually perform my move. So I can do just like this. And perfect. No extra inputs are required. We can perform our quarter circle move. Have fun making some cool commands with your new quarter circles. To everyone who made this episode possible, thank you so much. I want to give you a huge shout out to the Patreon and YouTube membership supporters. You guys are amazing, and I'm so incredibly grateful for you. Thank you for all the love and support. If anyone watching this video wants to check out the benefits that you get from being a Patreon member, such as receiving these templates for free once they're released on the Epic Marketplace, feel free to click this icon in the top right corner right here. It'll lead you directly to the Patreon page. You may see products below this video. You can click on them. That will lead you to our official merch shop that we just opened up. And you can buy things that directly support the channel while also getting some awesome merch along the way. I'm super excited about it, and I just want to show it off to you guys again. So thank you so much. If you ran into any problems trying to follow this episode or any of my content, feel free to join the Discord community. There's a link in the description that will help you out. Other than that, guys, that is all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.